What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, here for a reading of the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. Thank you very much to all the founders and the sponsors of this awesome event. Also, very much thank you to the contributors. Today, newsletter number 40 on April 2nd, 2019. This week's newsletter notes a spike in the estimated transaction fees describes Lightning Network trampoline payments and publicizes Bitcoin Core's intent to default its built-in wallet to BEC32 receiving addresses in version 0.20 or earlier. Also included are regular sections about BEC32 sending support and notable code changes in popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items. Help test Bitcoin Core version 0.18 release candidate 2. The second release candidate for the next major version of Bitcoin Core has been released. Testing is still needed by organizations and experienced users who plan to run the new version of Bitcoin Core in production. Use this issue to report feedback. Network status. Fee increases for fast confirmation. After over one year of most Bitcoin transactions confirming rather quickly as long as they pay a fee rate above the default minimum relay fee, expect a brief ex uh, exceptional period. A modest backlog has developed over the previous week and raised the fee rate for people who need their transaction to confirm within the next several blocks. Spenders willing to wait a bit longer can still save money. For example, as of this writing, Bitcoin Core's fee estimator suggests a fee uh, of uh, 0 0.00596060 Bitcoin per 1,000 V-bytes confirmation within two blocks. But only 2,120 Satoshis for confirmations within 50 blocks saving over 95% for waiting up to an extra 8 hours. For more information, we recommend jo Joho's mempool statistics and pay2scripthash.info's fee estimation tracker. News. Trampoline payments for the Lightning Network. Pierre-Marie Padieu started a threat on the Lightning Dev mailing list suggesting that Alice could send a payment to Zed even if she did not know a path to his node by first sending a payment to an intermediate node, for example Dan, and asking Dan to figure out the route the rest of the way to Zed. This would especially benefit Alice if she ran a lightweight Lightning Network node that did not attempt to keep track of the entire network. For increased privacy, Alice could use several intermediate nodes rather than just one, each one receiving its own instructions encrypted by Alice. A downside described in this email is that Alice could only make a rough guess about the required fees as she would not know the actual path. So she'd probably end up paying more in fees than if she chose the route herself. Bitcoin Core schedules a switch to default BEC32 receiving addresses. Since version 0.16, Bitcoin Core's built-in wallet has defaulted to generating pay-to-script-hash wrapped SegWit addresses when users want to receive payments. These addresses are backwards compatible with all wildly used software. As discussed in an issue and the project's weekly meeting, starting with Bitcoin Core version 0.20, expected about a year from now, Bitcoin Core will default to native SegWit addresses that provide additional fee savings and other benefits. Currently, many wallets and services already support sending to BEC32 addresses. And if the Bitcoin Core project sees enough additional adoption in the next six months to warrant an earlier switch, it will instead default to BEC32 receiving addresses in Bitcoin Core version 0.19. Pay to script hash wrapped sacred addresses will continue to be provided if the user requests them in the GUI or by RPC.
And anyone who does not want to do the update will be able to configure their default address type. Similarly, pioneering users who want to change their default now may set the address type equals BEC32 configuration option in any Bitcoin Core release from 0 0.16 and up. BEC32 sending support. Week 3 of 24. Until the second anniversary of the SegWit fork lock in on August 24th, 2019. The Optec newsletter will contain this weekly section that provides information to help developers and organizations to implement BEC32 sending support, the ability to pay native SegWit addresses. This does not require implementing SegWit yourself, but it does allow the people you pay to access all of SegWit's multiple benefits. In a previous week, we discussed how small the difference are between creating the output for a legacy address versus a native SegWit address. In that section, we simply point towards the BEC32 reference library and told you that you'd get two values back. In the next week, we walk through the exact steps of using the Python reference library so you can see how little work this is. We start by importing the library with import SegWit addresses. Then BEC32 addresses have a human readable part that indicates what network the address is for. These are the first few characters of the address and are separated from the data part of the address by the deli delimiter 1. For example, Bitcoin testnet uses TB as an example testnet address. Is TB1, Q3W, and so on. We'll see that the Bitcoin mainnet human readable part of BC in our code so that we can later ensure that the address we parse are for the network we expect. So HRP equals BC. Finally, we have a few addresses we want to check. One that should work and two that should fail. See BIP173 for a complete set of reef reference test vectors. A good address uh, is here with BC1Q. A typo address uh, is exactly the same, but BC1Q, where is the typo? Let's find it. Oh, well, I don't. Oh, here. Uh, this is a 9 and not an 8. And then the wrong network address would be TB1Q, indicating the testnet version. Now we can simply attempt to decode each of these addresses. That would be SegWit address decode HRP of the good address. And that returns 0 and these values. In 16, SegWit address decode the human readable part of the typo address. And the output here is none and none. And in 17, SegWit address decode the human readable part of the wrong network address. And that again returns errors of none and none. If we get back a none for the first value, the witness version, then the address is invalid on our chosen network. If that happens, you want to throw an exception up the stack so that whatever process is interfacing with the user can get them to provide you with a correct address. If you actually get a number uh, and an array, the, decode, the decoding succeeded, the checksum was valid, and the length was within the allowed range. The witness version must be a number between 0 and 16. So you'll want to check that, for example, 0 is smaller or equal than x is smaller or equal than 16. And then we convert it into the corresponding opcodes, op0 through op16. For op0, this is 0x00. For op1 through op16, this is 0x51 through 0x60. 
you then need to add a push byte for the data depending on its length 0x02 through 0x28 for 2 to 40 bytes and then append the data as a series of bytes. Peter Woolley's code does this quite succinctly. Witness version is witness progress equals SegWit address of decoding the human readable part of the good address, and that returns the bytes of the witness version plus the 0x50 if the witness version else zero and then the length of the witness program plus the witness program and that in a hex format, returning this right here. That's your entire script pub key. You can use that in the output of a transaction and send it. Note that BAC32 script pub keys can vary in size from four to 42 virtual bytes. So you need to consider the actual size of the script pub key in your fee estimation code. Your code does not need to be written in Python. Reference libraries are also provided in C, C++, Go, Haskell, JavaScript, Ruby, and Rust. Further, BIP173 describes BAC32 well enough that any decent programmer should be able to implement it from scratch in their preferred language without requiring anything beyond what most programming languages provide in their built-ins and standard library. Other BAC32 sending support updates. BitGo announced that their API now supports sending to BAC32 addresses. See their announcement for additional details about BAC32 receiving support. The Gemini Exchange also apparently added BAC32 sending support this week. And users report that Gemini defaults to accepting deposits to BAC32 addresses as well. Great job both BitGo and Gemini. Notable code changes and documentation changes this week in Bitcoin Core, LND, C Lightning, Eclair, Lipsec P256K1, and the Bitcoin improvement proposals. Note all merges described for Bitcoin Core are to its master development branch. Some may also be backported to the 0.18 branch for the pending 0.18.0 release. This Bitcoin Core merge stops the max transaction fee configuration parameter from affecting the send raw transaction and test mempool accept RPCs. Previously, those RPCs would default to rejecting a transaction paying a fee higher than the configured maximum. Now a hard-coded default of 0.1 BTC is used as the acceptable ceiling. The max transaction fee configuration parameter is still used by Bitcoin Core's built-in wallet. It has just been separated from node-specific RPCs. This change is part of the general cleanup of wallet configuration options, as well as a part of separating the node and the wallet, which both use the setting before this change. This Bitcoin Core merge changes the Python script Bitcoin Core developers use to merge commits so that the git merge message includes a list of which developer approved, acknowledged, the version of a pull request that was merged. This internal project change is perhaps not notable by itself, but one of the tool's other features, which is copying the full pull request description into the merge message makes it much easier for the author of this section to write these merge summaries. So he encourages other Bitcoin projects to investigate the advantage of using this tool for automatically creating better Git-based documentation as well as improving their security and audibility. This Bitcoin Core merge adds a Poly 1305 implementation to Bitcoin Core, but it does not use it. This is expected to be used later for an implementation of the peer-to-peer -peer protocol encryption. This Bitcoin Core merge modifies the mempool-related RPCs, such as get raw mempool, to rename the size fail field to virtual size or vSize.
The previous value was also the V size, so the calculation has not changed. This merged pull request simply makes it clear that this is a virtual size and not a stripped size. For backwards compatibility, you can start Bitcoin Core with the depreciated RPC equals size parameter to continue using the old file name, although this will remove in this will be removed in a future release. We have this LND merge allows the default check time log verify delta for all channels, ch channels from 144 blocks, which is roughly 24 hours, to 40 blocks, which is roughly 6.7 hours. When Alice wants to pay Z through a series of routing nodes, she starts by giving money to Bob under the terms that either Alice can take it back after, say, 400 blocks, or that Bob can claim that money before then if he can provide the pre-image for a particular hash, the key that opens a hash lock. The 400 block delay is enforced on chain if necessary using op check lock time verify. Bob then sends the money minus the routing fee to Charlie with similar terms. Expect that the check lock time verify value is reduced from Alice's original 400 blocks by the check lock time verify delta of his channel with Charlie, reducing the value to 360 blocks. This ensures that if Charlie waits the maximum time to fulfill his hash time lock contract to Bob and he claims his payment after 360 blocks, Bob still has 40 blocks to claim his payment from Alice by fulfilling the original hash time lock contract. If Bob's hash time lock contract expiry time with Charlie was not reduced at all and used a 400 block delay, then Bob would be at risk of losing money. Charlie could delay the fulfilling his hash time lock contract until 400 blocks. And Alice could then cancel her hash time lock contract with Bob before he had time to fulfill the hash time lock contract. Subsequent routers, subsequent routers each successively subtract their delta from the value of the terms they give to the next node in that route. Using a high check lock time verified delta, therefore, reduces the possibility or the possible number of hops that can be used in a route and makes a channel less attractive for use when routing payments. This eclair change replaces the JSON RPC interface with the HTTP POST interface. Instead of RPC commands, HTTP endpoints are used. For example, the channel state RPC is now post HTTP localhost 8080 channel stats. Parameters are provided to an endpoint using named form parameters with the same JSON syntax as used with RPC parameters. Returned results are identical to before the change. The old interface is still available using the configuration parameter eclair API use old API equals true, but it is expected to be removed in a subsequent release. See the updated API documentation for details. Pierce, you gotta subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter and thank you very much to all the founding sponsors and the contributors of this awesome organization. Thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.